you guys, Dr. Dobson, a uh, couple of wisdom tooth extractions in this video. Uh, this is a patient that we saw who was complaining of pain in his left side that was caused by his uh, severely decayed 2.8 and 3.8. And you can see how much bone loss there's been uh, behind the 3.8. So this thing's definitely had a few episodes of pericoronitis. He also had a retained um, 7.4 or 7.5 primary molar there that we removed. Um, here are some intraorals. They were pretty bombed out. And then some footage of the procedure. Didn't have to use a drill. We got them all out um, with uh, elevators and forceps. And I will start the footage here. A little bit of political talk at the start of the clip. Apologies for that. Well, I'm supposed to be on long-term disability and I'm able to work. Right. But I changed my diet and I have... Interesting. Behind. Yeah. Yeah, well, diet's huge. Diet and exercise. I mean, yeah, I, I dropped booze uh, January 1st and I've never been happier and healthier. I feel a pinch here. Oh, Sorry. Okay, gonna give another one of those blocks, which you shouldn't really feel these ones. Okay, I'm not feeling that at all. Good. Unfortunately, the healthcare system is kind of designed to make money. Well, the dental healthcare system is for sure. Like the medical healthcare system is designed to be as efficient as possible with public dollars, which yeah. is the way that it should be. Um, like healthcare systems shouldn't be privately, you know. Um, but uh, big open there, gonna feel another sharp pinch on the roof of the mouth. Yeah, it shouldn't be a profit thing, but it is. Like you look at the states and they spend the most per capita and have not good health outcomes for how much they spend on it because it is privatized. Like you look at, but you look at like a country, like Canada's pretty good yeah. when it comes to like the per capita spending compared to the outcomes. But you look at places like Norway, Sweden, Finland that you know, spend a good amount on these public services and they have great health outcomes. And dental as well, like dental is part of the private or the uh, publicly funded healthcare system just like it is in the UK. And actually, gonna feel another pinch here. Yeah, actually that new federal plan, I actually contacted our MP, um, Rod Morrison's office to be like, hey, there's a really efficient way to do this. Yeah. And I have ideas. You can look all the way to the right there and I'm gonna be tugging the cheek here. Just keep looking to the right. Close down halfway. That's good. Okay, so one more in the for the block here, and you can do the same thing, look up at the flagpole and open as wide as you can. And you're gonna feel a pinch in the back of the mouth here, maybe, probably not. So yeah, the, the lip and chin should feel super nice. The smallest one is this one. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you can look all the way to the right, all the way as far as your head will go. And then I'm going to be tugging the cheek, but just kind of tense your neck up and keep looking as far right as you can. And, and you're going to feel some kind of pressure up there and it usually takes a minute or so and that sort of crunching sound is also normal I'll grab a force up there but we'll grab it big stretch there 
There we go. Yeah, a little bit, but not too bad. All right, that one's out. There it is. Yeah. There's the cavity in it. Let's have a look at the socket there. That looks okay. I think I might get another uh, intraoral of that buckle. Okay, gonna get started on the lower. Wow. Lots of pressure. And this one, the typically the bone is more dense on the lower, so there's a decent chance that the tooth might uh, break apart on us. Good. I'll probably grab a elevator there. Lots of pressure. We're probably gonna get this one out. We'll flip there. Probably gonna get this one out without having to remove any bone, which is fortunate, and it's just coming out right now. Well, we got lucky. Yeah, so easy extractions there. Wasn't it a bit bigger? Great. Yeah, so there's there's that one. I know it's no fun, but they, they both came out definitely as easy as they possibly could have. You can just put your head back in there. So we'll give you some gauze to bite down on here and then just some instructions for the next couple of days. I can do that little one too or do I come on? We can, yeah. I mean, it should. Uh, let's have a look there. Yeah, it definitely should and it's going to take like 10 seconds if you want us to use it. Oh, just get it over. Okay. This one very likely might break as well. No, oh, all good. Okay, all done. So there's there's that one too. So you can close down. Okay, you can bite down on the gauze there. That's good. So. Yeah, so because they came out fairly easily, um, you should have a fairly straightforward recovery. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to make any incisions or drill bone, which is wow. something that often needs to be done with especially lower wisdom teeth. But it is gonna be tender and bleed for the rest of the day. Yeah. It might bleed a little bit tomorrow as well, yeah. which shouldn't be too concerning if you see like pink in your saliva. Mm -hmm. Um, keep taking Advil and Tylenol. Mm -hmm. If you went above the max, it's okay because you're a big guy and it's, they're really pretty safe drugs. So, But if you have gone over, then you know keep taking Tylenol because you can still take that even if you've gone over the max for Advil. I don't think that you should need anything stronger than Advil and Tylenol. I usually don't prescribe anything other than just recommend that. So. But yeah, no, otherwise, I mean, dry socket is a very small chance of happening. And usually that's if you, you know, do something to disturb the area. So just try to leave it as undisturbed as possible. There's going to be some guidelines in the bag with instructions that we'll give you. I'll put your teeth in a little box so you can take them home with you. <laughs> um, yes, you are.